I think the next question is, okay, but protecting our children is the real battle that needs the real energy diverted to the manifestation of these sanctuaries. The pedophiles are the start of this war within. I find myself uh, willing to burn them up with my glare using the Kundalini this way and advocating against. And so there's, again, the, we're going on with the conflict and we understand the pain. Again, like I'm not trying to discount anybody else's buffoonery on the realm. But what I'm saying is the greatest damage of what we do are doing to ourselves is we're not moving beyond it. We, I'll tell you how it was appearing to me. I was in the astral plane and there was a team there and everybody in the team had powers. The land was radiated. Somehow people had become affected and sick to a point where, wow, this is crazy because it's almost what is even happening right now. I had this dream written. It was like at least 14 years ago. Everybody was fenced in like they were on quarantine. And they were like evil. If anything you can think of as evil, this is how they were acting. And in that mode and I, where I was at, especially spiritually, is I was in the army of the Lord in this case. And all I wanted to do was kill demons, fight demons. So when I saw these beings that were infected and how evil they were, I jumped over the gate and I started beating on one of them. And I was beating it and beating it and beating it. And this was going on in the dream. And it started to, it was dead clearly after I was beating it. But I started to feel the transmissions from this team. And this team was saying, you see what you're doing? You're becoming it. And then I looked and I had become infected by it because I was beating it. So what that meant to me is that the more that I keep trying to fight this war in that same mindset that they're fighting it with, I'm only becoming them. This is not a fight. Good will always triumph. It's just a winning team. There's a time and a place here. There's a period that goes on. And then in the end of the game, the king and the pawn go in the same box. So what I'm saying is that there's a weight in the measure of the period and time in which is this all what we're calling life right now is going to transpire. You need to make the best of it. And I've always seen that the people that have come from the craziest sediment end up growing into the most beautiful, abundantly rich flowers. And that does become difficult to alchemize when you're thinking about the pain and the abuse. There is no excuse for this. There's no it's OK with that. That's not what we're doing here. But what we're saying is, is that there is a power that is greater that if you wanted to really heal from this, you would need to access that power because that's the power that heals those kind of things. And when you look in the world, they don't have that kind of power yet. A lot of, they can't, they have a hard time healing people that have been through sexual traumas and those kind of things. They haven't unlocked that energy yet. So if you truly thought that you wanted to really do something for beings that have experienced this kind of thing, you would really unlock your kundalini to heal them, not to kill more beings, to create only a repetition of the same thing and then to become infected with it by yourself. So you're not a killer, you're a healer. And those words are very similar. But in many ways, they're different. So you have to learn that find that fine line that's what i'm saying is discernment you need laser you need uh, to raise lazarus or the tool that allows you to cut to where you don't you don't hurt something you heal it it's like if i gotta take a tumor off your brain i can't cut too deep into your brain you see what i mean so you got to know how to move through this and this this kind of behavior, I want to kill them. I want to destroy them. And I felt that power and energy before, but I also felt its limitation. It's like being in the game and you need to score the final point, but you're so distracted. You're not in Zen, which is another name for Hermes, by the way, which is Zoroaster. You're not in Zen. You're in something else. And then that's, you're not unlocked anyway. You're just rage. This is what will happen to you. And I'm not speaking to you. I'm speaking to myself. So just remember, if nobody's going to tell you what really should be done, maybe nobody will because you're beyond reproach. Where are your parents? Are they going to be able to tell you how in which to carry your energy? So this is what you left me with to give to you is just this awareness that, look, I've been through everything that you're talking about. I've 
slayed these beings before in the astral plane, chained down demons, sealed them with talismans, and watched them beat on the, the, the face plate of what I've chained them in, only to find seven years later them return and to wreak havoc on my life. And then realize that maybe I could have handled that a different way. And maybe those entities are in need of actually something too. And if I happen to be in a space to be able to communicate with them, maybe I would have been able to impart that on them with my power rather than destroy them with my power. Because that would have been the same thing as if I got introduced into another world and then my teacher or my guide said, finish him. He's not worthy of returning into existence. You see what I mean? So the same thing we get is the, the same thing we give is the same thing that we're going to get. And we need to really realize how much power that holds in our lives and how we make decisions every single day that really govern where we're going.